Hello, this is Matt Leonard for The Foundry and in this video we're looking at the Particle Cache Node, a new feature of Nucate. So the Particle Cache Node enables you to cache particle simulations to file and this enables you to then read them back in a different session or on a different machine without the need for recalculation. And this also allows the particle system to be produced by one artist and then used in a render farm without again it having to be recalculated which obviously speeds up render time. So let me show you how it works. If we come into our tool sets, let's load up a preset of particles, maybe the snow box. Now if we come into here, select our viewer to it by pressing 1 on the keyboard and then having double clicked on it and loading it into our properties panel we can press S to see the internal structure and here is our particle system. So whereabouts do we put our particle cache node? Well I tend to put it at the bottom of our particles here so I'm just going to choose this node I'm going to come across the particles and particle cache I'm just going to drop it in here Let's then go ahead and select one on the viewer just to view it. And here you can see what we've got is our nice snow box. So from here, it's simply a question of coming up to the file and choosing where we want the cache to be saved. So I'm going to select my file button, come across to my home folder. And in here, I've made a cache folder. And I'm now just going to determine what my cache is going to be called. So I'm going to call it snow. 01 then I put in the hashes and these hashes are determine each frame so I've got obviously a hundred frames so I'd want a minimum of three hashes I'm actually going to use four which is what I would normally do and then we give it the file name which is nk for nuke obviously and then pc for particle cache so nk pc if you were to leave this off it would just automatically add it for you so no problem there I then click the open button just to almost say OK to this dialog box and then I can determine whether I want to add padding. Now what does the padding do? Now what padding actually does is used if you have downstream nodes that require extra frames for outputting the normal range such as if you were using motion blur or scanline renderer shutter length. That's when you would use the padding control and it sets the number of frames to extend the sequence by at both the front and the end. So that can be really useful. But for what we're looking at, we just want to keep padding at one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit render and it's immediately just going to start writing those files out to disk. Now while this is going, it's worth noting that the particle cache node must be placed at the base of a single particle system or multiple merged particle systems. What it can't do, however, is be placed beneath a scene node connected by two separate streams or in the middle of a stream of particle nodes. It must be at the bottom so that it is able to cache everything that's taking place. So that's really important. Now a question that sometimes comes up is can I delete my upstream particle node once this is in place? And the answer is no. The particle cache node doesn't replace the rest of the particle system. It just stores the simulation to disk and still relies on the particle system being connected in the same way with the same inputs. If anything in the particle system changes, the particle cache node detects this and shows an error. So then you know to go in and recache it. So it's pretty seamless in the way it works. And if anything in the particle system changes, the particle cache node detects this and shows an error. And the error is intended to alert the user to changes that have been taken place upstream without possibly their knowledge. Okay, so we're just in our last few frames. Now we're done. So now all the files have been cached. And if we were to come back here, have a look in the folder, you'll see that we now have 0 to 101 number of cached frames NKPC frames here and that's taking up 194 megabytes so be aware if you start caching lots of things you are going to need the space so it's obviously not a huge amount of space that's being used so let's cancel that and now the way that we actually use the cache is we simply use the read from file button so the minute that's on we're able now to play through this 
And what we're seeing is this being played out of the cache. And because of that, we're able to start anywhere we like. We can scrub forward and back at any speed we like, and we have no problems. If we try and go to a frame that we haven't cached, we immediately get an error, just saying that the particle cache data isn't found. And that's because I'm actually trying to view minus one frame, which obviously I didn't cache. So if you ever see this error, it's just telling you you don't have cache information. Maybe a frame is missing. Maybe as I am, you're trying to view a frame that hasn't been cached. But other than that, you're going to find this works really well. It really speeds up all of your particle work. And I found it to be something that I'm using all the time for any particle systems that I'm generating. So a really great addition to Nucate, the particle cache node. So thanks for watching. And as I said at the beginning, this has been Matt Leonard on behalf of the Foundry.